Welcome to our monthly Forge newsletter. In our April edition, we are going to introduce the induction process in Forge. We will explain in detail all you need to know to prepare and launch an induction simulation, including the coupled thermal electromagnetic computation, available materials, best meshing techniques, and how to configure all the simulation parameters. In addition, we will talk about advanced topics and available results. The induction simulation is divided in two different simulations, an electromagnetic simulation and a thermal simulation. The reason for that is that the thermal solver communicates with the electromagnetic solver to update the electromagnetic field according with the changes in temperature. This video shows how to launch both simulation at the same time. The electromagnetic simulation is sequential, so it only needs one processor. For the thermal simulation, you can use as many processors as you want. For the thermal simulation, we can use any material in the default Forge database. However, for the electromagnetic simulation, we have five materials that define five different categories. The electromagnetic calculation is done in one unique object. It is called Global Mesh and it is a combination of billet, inductor, and environment air. This video shows how to define the different areas in the Global Mesh object to optimize the electromagnetic calculation. First we need to create a mesh box that includes all the objects in our setup except the inlet and outlet of the inductor. This is because the current must directly enter the inductor through an external surface to the system, not through an inductor air interface. Also, try to expand the dimensions, so boundary conditions do not alter the results. It is important to define all the objects and their interfaces in this unique mesh. The best way to do it is through multiple mesh boxes. In this example, we are going to create five mesh boxes to define, in that order, inductor inlet and outlet, inductor turns, billet body, billet skin affected by the inductor, and air between billet and inductor. You can expand this procedure to any other electromagnetic simulation, as the elements for this type of simulation are always the same.
When all the mesh boxes are ready, we need to combine all the information. To do it, use the Combine Object feature. After that, just apply a standard SDL meshing and a volume meshing. Do not forget to check the Use Mesh Boxes option for the SDL meshing. For the thermal simulation, we use standard meshing techniques. First, we need to import the build geometry from the electromagnetic simulation. After that, we can refine the mesh in the billet S skin to improve the results. Finally, remember to volume mesh the billet. This video explains in detail these steps. The main parameters to set in the electromagnetic simulation are current intensity and frequency to establish the electromagnetic field, initial temperature of the billet to solve Maxwell's equation in the first calculation, and number of increment per period to set the precision of the results. Once in the thermal simulation, we need to indicate the initial temperature and the desired heating time. Finally, we can establish the number of temperature steps to trigger the electromagnetic field update. It is possible to apply symmetries for the electromagnetic field through planes. The number of turns specified in the induction parameters must remain constant with symmetry planes. 8 for an inductor with 8 turns and it must be reduced to half for anti-symmetry planes. 4. For an inductor with 8 turns. When symmetries are applied, it is possible to use reference geometries as the hollow cylinder in the picture on the left. Just remember to specify the number of turns accordingly using this picture as reference. For each turn, you must indicate current input and output surfaces using just one set. The values that define effective current and frequency of current remain identical to a solid geometry. Just change the number of turns. For materials with little electrical resistivity temperature dependency, we can reduce the computational time significantly, calculating the electromagnetic field just once at the beginning. Set a high electromagnetic coupling temperature step to cancel the communication between solvers. We are going to explain the main results from the electromagnetic simulation. Thermal results are the same as other standard simulations. This video shows how to create a cutting plane to properly visualize these results.
the temperature is obtained from the thermal simulation. The current values for the four cases shown are 8000 amperes and 500 hertz in the top left, 8000 amperes and 1000 hertz in the top right, 10000 amperes and 500 hertz in the bottom left, 10000 amperes and 1000 hertz in the bottom right. The electrical potential field is the difference in potential that will circulate electrons and create the electrical current. It is only non-zero in the inductor since it is the source of the current. It's highest on the inlet and lowest on the outlet. The magnetic field is defined throughout the domain. It can be shown in x, y, and z coordinates or as a norm of these three as it is shown here. The induced magnetic field is available in x, y, and z coordinates and as a norm of these three as well. It is only defined in the billet because it is created by the part in response to the magnetic field created by the inductor. The heat power field is the power density created by the inductor used to heat the part. The field object index is used to differentiate between the objects in the simulation. The value 1 corresponds to the billet. The value 2 corresponds to the inductor. And the value 3 to the air. The vector magnetic field shows the direction and orientation of the magnetic field created by the inductor at every computational step. The vector induced magnetic field shows the direction and orientation of the magnetic field created by the induced current in the part at every computational step. Thank you for watching our April newsletter. The topic for our May newsletter will be the rolling simulation with results coming from continuous casting obtained with our casting simulation software, Thurcast. Thank you, and we will see you next month.